What's a horrifying slash creepy experience you have lived through? Serious. Waking up to a strange man standing over me watching me sleep. I froze and stayed still till he left. I thought it was sleep paralysis until I found a box cutter he left on my kitchen table. Turned out to be a maintenance man for my apartment who got fired. Pet and house sitting. Two dogs, two cats. These friends of mine lived in the middle of nowhere. It is nighttime and literally all of them look at the corner and look like they are tracking something that is moving. They all get super aggressive. Hissing and rage barking, they all stopped at around the same time. I wanted to get in my car and go home. Not okay. I was playing the game Fear in my room at night with the lights out when I turn around and see what looks like the girl from the game standing there or watching me play. It turned out to be someone visiting my roommates who for some reason let themselves into my room and watched me play for who knows how long before I noticed. Was doing World War II archaeological mapping of fighting bunkers slash body recovery in the Pacific. We were in one cave that was used as a holdout mapping the area and documenting for the local government. My flashlight caught all this glinting shiny stuff in the cave floor and I was like oh, that's pretty, what's going on here? I walked closer and in the dark under my flashlight I realized it was a load of human teeth that got blown apart and mashed into the mud of the cave floor. Looked down and I was standing on more teeth and other parts, it's strange how fast something that looks so pretty can turn sad and creepy. I sat for a second to look around and it got a lot worse the more I looked. Plenty more to the story but that's the general idea. That was a wild project and the things I saw during that one will stay with me for a long time. It's haunting but in a sad way. Not scary, just knowing that civilians were in that cave as well when everything blew up with the soldiers that came in and used it as well. The civilians couldn't leave and the soldiers weren't going to give up alive. Part of the doctrine of that particular fighting force in the Pacific Theater at the time, so many shoes, high heels, picture frames, family heirlooms that folks had taken as they ran for safety. Parts of people were absolutely everywhere in that cave. Crazy day at work for sure. On deployment with the Navy a 19-year-old lookout spotted a dead body in the ocean. So the crew did the decent thing and brought on board, double bagged it, put it in a freezer, and handed it over to the local authorities at our next port visit. Not to go too far into the gory details, there were enough teeth left to identify it by dental records, somebody had to clean the wire stretcher that had brought it in. And despite the common acronym for Navy, never again volunteer yourself. I knew another teenager would be assigned that char unless somebody more mature took it on. So I volunteered. The corpsman provided PPE and iodine and I gave it a good scrubbing, sailors being what they are, two rumors ran around the crew that week, don't eat the peas because the body had purportedly been stored next to the frozen peas, it wasn't, according to both the corpsman and the chase, and there's still skin on that stretcher. This was also untrue. Yet having been the fool who had volunteered for that work I got ordered to clean the stretcher a second time, every crude joke imaginable made the rounds too. What's his name? Bob. Etc. much to the distress of the lookout who had spotted the body and reported it. Took her aside to say a few kind words to the effect of there's a family that will be able to get closure because of her, she did a good deed. Staying in an old hotel somewhere in Spain, Catalonian mountains, alone half asleep, I felt someone tickling my ankles, heard female giggling. Being half asleep I moaned about it and told them to quit it. I woke up in the morning and realized I was alone in a locked room and who? What? Sleep paralysis, multiple times. It started when I lived alone and I would hallucinate a stranger approaching the door to my apartment and fiddling with the lock until the door opened. Then a shadowy figure would come in and sit on my bed. The sounds and sensations were so vivid but I could never get a clear visual. It also happened in the hospital where I imagined a bunch of doctors surrounding me and talking about my like I wasn't conscious. And I've seen my partner next to me in bed take on a demonic expression and whisper threatening things to me. I was house sitting slash pet sitting at a house in the mountains west of Denver. It was early evening. I was outside throwing the ball for the two golden retrievers when out of the blackness came a scream that sounded like a woman. I froze. The dogs immediately started growling and snarling into the darkness that surrounded the house. I heard the scream again, and again in the third or fourth time I realized that the scream sounded nearly identical every time, which almost made it more terrifying. I rushed the dogs inside and made sure all the doors and windows were locked. I nearly called 911, 
but the scream was so consistent in pitch and duration that I went to the internet to figure out if it could be an animal. Turns out, the roar of a mountain lion can often sound like a woman is being bludgeoned. This is definitely up there for most frightening experiences in my life. I was about 14 and my parents had gone out to dinner with some adult friends. I happily stayed home on my own. I'm watching TV with the cats and I hear a noise from the garage which shares a wall with our living room. Both cats stand up, and start staring at the wall, peering with all their might and not moving a muscle. I hear it again. Then a bunch more noises clanks and clunks, there is definitely something in our garage, I'm scared the only thing separating us from the garage monster slash hatchet murderer is a flimsy internal door in the utility room with an average lock. We are out in the country police will take some time to get to us. I can't call my parents this is ancient pre-cell phone times, I grab the fireplace poker nice heavy iron one, and the phone, with its mile of cord trailing after me, and head upstairs to a more defensible position. I call my uncle who lives about 10 minutes away and tell him what's going on he says he is on the way I ask him, should I call the police? I was a kid and wasn't sure about calling, he says hell yes, I call the police and they say they're on the way, a wonderful lady is on the line with me now, but I'm more scared than ever because there is more clanking and clattering from the garage and now a weird tapping slash scratching on the utility room door, now the cats are puffing up and growling at the door I've never seen them act that way before. My heart is in my throat. The lady on the phone tells me to go into the house as far as I can put as many doors between me and whatever is in the garage as I can. I'm now cowering in the master bathroom, behind my parents' bedroom door, the bathroom door, and in the shower cubicle. But that phone cord I mentioned it leads straight to where I'm hiding. I wait, scared to death, while the lady keeps me informed about what is going on. I hear shouting outside, male voices. The lady tells me the police officers are outside and that they've found a man at the side of the garage, in retrospect now, I'm just thankful that the police didn't kill my uncle who turned up with a shotgun and was prowling around outside the garage trying to peer in the windows to see who or what was inside, I've never been so scared in my life or so grateful. Thank you amazing 911 lady who stayed with me, thank you police officers who came to my rescue. Thank you uncle who was ready to protect me, who or what was in the garage. A possum. We all had a good laugh. We don't know how he got trapped in there, but he was stuck in our closed garage and having a good nose through the recycling boxes, hence all the clanking and clattering, I made my parents buy us a fancy new cordless phone. I used to work a graveyard shift in retail, basically, it was a clothing retailer and when the mall was closed, I would come in and clean the store up, fold the clothes, fasten security tags, etc. I didn't have a car. So my day was me waking up at midnight, walk two hours and get in an hour early to start my shift. Well, the road I took has no gas stations, businesses, or any sort of public place until halfway point at a park. And, I suddenly have the problem of my stomach isn't agreeing with what I ate before I left, so I remember the park has a public restroom. Now, this restroom was basically a basin with a drain for the urinal, a low pressure sink, and a stall. The public restrooms had no door was just open going in, and a grate making an opening for whatever light coming in. And no lights inside whatsoever, so I use my phone flashlight, go to the stall, lock it, and do my business after turning out the light. A couple minutes pass of me looking at my phone. And I hear loud, heavy boot steps coming into the bathroom. Now, I know people make the joke of bet you're glad you were on the toilet haha. -ha. No, I learned fear makes your butt clench faster than a cigar cutter. I hold my breath as I hear these boots walk up to the stall and try the door, thankfully, me locking it showed. I was about to say occupied when this being grunts and growls, and starts rattling that door. I stood up, getting my pants up quickly getting ready for a brawl. And I yell I am armed. If you don't stop I will open fire, now, the scary part was. I was bluffing. I had nothing, no knife, no gun. Just two fists and a load of adrenaline. The next thing I hear is these footsteps steer out like a bat out of hell. I wait a couple moments. Tighten my belt, and make like a bat myself, my hands up ready for what there may be. Thankfully, no one was there. I never sprinted so fast to that job, and I never, stopped at that park again. We had a guy who was picking up women in the college town area I lived in and murdering them and dumping them down this road I would bike down to get my my ex-bf's parents house I'd visit occasionally. 
I was walking around college town in broad daylight and this guy in a beige looking car pulled over and asked me if I wanted a ride. I kept walking and I turned down my street to walk back to my house and he pulled in and tried to cut me off with his car. Immediately, he hops out and tries to grab me and I started to run. It just so happened someone a little further down that street had gotten pulled over and I started to scream for the police. He gets in his car and peels off, they caught the guy murdering women sometime later. It was that very same douchebag. I almost lost my SHD when I seen it on TV. I was leaving my friend's place and I hopped on the light rail. I passed by the large Christmas tree lighting in downtown and I remember thinking I forgot it was that night. It's an event I'm aware of but have only attended once. Anyway so I kept going. I get home, walk in the door pondering if I want to order a pizza while thinking I turn on the TV and flip to the news where they start telling the story of the arrest of a guy a bit earlier. The news says this guy had been planning to blow up the tree lighting event but the FBI had set him up with a fake bomb and luckily he'd never realized it was a dud. The time he pressed the button was around the same time I was passing by, I felt really creeped out by that for a while. When I was 11 my dad, captain of the local sheriff's department, received a car crash over the radio as we were on the way to school. A sports car had spun out on the ice and become wedged under the trailer of a semi. The man drive the car was decapitated. For a good nine month that that was the most horrifying thing I had experienced. Nine months later my dad was called to be the lead investigator of a puppy mill. Seeing dogs literally glued to the bars of their cages from feces that they chewed their own feet off. Cats that had eaten their own buttholes because the crap was caked on. Birds that wouldn't eat anything that didn't have poop on it. The smell of rotting flesh. That was the worst, it's been 24 years and the thought still makes me gag. Waking up in the middle of the night and hearing what sounded like a wounded animal wailing, inside the house, just downstairs. I creeped along the landing and stood there for a bit, baffled, and then I realized it was human, a person making the kind of guttural noise that can only mean absolute grief and horror, after a few moments straining my ears I then realized it was my mom. My sister is dead was my immediate thought. And I just stood there, frozen, not wanting to go downstairs and find out what had happened. I didn't want to make it real. If I just stayed on that landing in the dark I could just stay in the reality where whatever was making my mum sound like an animal hadn't happened yet, but eventually I had to go down, so I did. The wailing was coming from the kitchen, and as I got down to the hallway I was hit by the cold night air. The front door was wide open. No one there. No car pulled up. The kitchen was dark, but I could tell my mum was in there. I was so confused and scared. As I walked in I saw a tall figure, definitely not my dad, who was away on a trip at the time, and my mom. As my eyes adjusted to the dark, I saw that she was looking on with a thousand yard stare, her face wet. I then recognized the figure as our longtime family friend who lived on the other side of town. My confusion deepened, I asked why he was here, with a terse tone that surprised myself, like I was angry he had brought something into our house, something horrible. He then blankly stated that his daughter was dead. My long-term childhood friend, he had received the news just 20 minutes prior that his 22-year-old, perfectly healthy daughter, had dropped dead in her flat due to unknown reasons. He was home alone at the time and his first thought was to come to us. He had told the police woman who had told him to drop him off round the corner so that the appearance of a police car wouldn't alarm us, in hindsight it means a lot that he would seek support from us at such a horrific time, but while that night will be a core memory for me for all the worst reasons, for a couple of months after that I would freak out whenever I heard a wailing noise, whether organic or mechanical, it would just immediately take me back to that spot on the landing. When I was five, I went to the beach with my grandparents. There was a dead orca that had washed up, and a bunch of marine biologists were there trying to figure out why it died, and had dissected it right there on the shore, it had a full quarter of its body removed from head to tail, and I could see all the insides. There was a pool of blood inside it that I could have swam in at the time. The thought of that horrified me and gave me PTSD for many years after. It manifested in the strangest way, I couldn't sleep without putting a blanket over my sheets, and sleeping on top of that. It imagined the sheet as the inside of that whale, and plunging myself into that pool of blood. One day, I simply got over it I guess. Someone knocked on door when I was about 19. I stupidly opened door. He forced way in. To make a long story short, he strangled me and left me for dead. I regained consciousness and was physically okay. 
the creep was caught several months later. I was having a nightmare about the panda from Kung Fu Panda and he was making the most inhuman sounds, sounded something like oh but it was so uncanny. Anyways I woke up, looked around, and I heard one last oh while I was awake. I wasn't inside a second dream either because I remember processing what happened and leaving to eat breakfast. I was there in the hospital when my daughter was born. We already knew that things were not okay, she was missing a leg among other things. It was the most terrifying thing I have ever experienced, in the end everything turned out very well. She is now almost 4 years old now and way ahead of her pairs in terms of numbers, speaking, reading etc. She is a happy bright kid and starting to get used to her prosthetic as well which makes her mobile enough to do kids stuff. I'm so proud of her. I'm in a medical program currently. We have cadaver labs. There have been several instances where the company that provides the cadavers didn't warn us about certain bodies having things. The one that I can recall is a guy that donated his eyes for organ donation. They did not sew his eyelids shut. When we opened the bag the first day it was horrifying. We expected to see eyelids and instead there were just bare orbits. Quite the shock. Going down the hill in my car, goes from national speed limit to 20 miles per hour so I slow down way before, pass a car waiting for me since the lane is narrow and see four cars at the bottom of the hill all in a line barely moving. Like it is eerie. They are all next to parked cars so I have got to slow down to let them pass but something is off. I go to press my brake, nothing, press my brake again nothing. No friction, no nose, no change in the car's movement. Literally stop registering anything and my body's autopilot takes over. I remember I am doing 17 miles per hour at this point so thank god I slowed down. I am about to crash into the first parked car but I have to swerve into the opposite pavement and hedge to avoid the car next to it. Car comes to a stop and for a second I am just absolutely clueless what the hell happened. It is like a dream, this is what black ice is, true black ice. Appears from nowhere, looks like normal road. Wasn't even icy anywhere else so no warning it would be there. Thankfully I only got a slight dent where the car at the parked car in the corner, that eerie feeling is there to warn you things aren't right. If it happens when you are driving stop and assess the road. It could save your life. So one night I woke up to get some water it was around 1 am, as I go to the kitchen I hear like 10 neighborhood dogs barking. I stood there for like 5 minutes and they don't stop barking I am creeped out and too scared to look out the window, I finally gather up all the courage left in me and look out the kitchen window to see a hooded figure trying to break in through the backyard gate which was locked. I literally wanted scream but I called 911 while I was hiding in my bedroom looking out through my bedroom window. By the time the cops came he had broken my back door, turns out he was a robber and thought nobody was in the house because he had been watching my house for like 5 days and I never left the house or opened the windows. He had a gun and would have killed me if he found out I was there. He had committed 2 murders already and the police were looking for him for like 2 weeks. Warning, graphic content, before my meds to help control these, I used to get, well flashbacks. They would be triggered by sound or dreams nightmares rather being a former firefighter i could smell smoke burnt skin and flesh i'd break out into an instant sweat get disoriented and be terrified even though i had never felt consciously terrified while on assignment i would dream about calls some i knew i had been on and others i had to ask some of the guys about turns out that there were entire calls from 25 plus years ago that i don't even remember calls where a backyard burn blew up in a guy's face and the skin on his arms started peeling off when we arrived they were hanging off a good eight like gloves. I can still see the look of terror in his eyes. All of this started after I finished my chemotherapy and radiation treatments in 2012 followed up by a bad rear-end car accident in 2014 with a DBI. Before I sought help for this shit, things were bad, really bad. In my younger dumber years I picked up a couple of hitchhikers on Highway 1 towards Santa Cruz, a young woman and man. She turned out to be very stupid and he started joking about killing me and they both laughed. I pulled the car over and dumped them out near Pescadero. He was still laughing as I peeled out of there. Dumb. Mother died of cancer in early 2013 while in hospice care. She had passed into a comatose state in the middle of texting one of her friends, we discovered the unsent message on her phone. We never finished the message and thus never sent it either. Fast forward a few weeks. 
past the funeral and into the stages of handling her will and talks with her lawyer. At this time one of my brothers held onto her phone, will stuff. One day, it received a message, from our deceased mother. I don't quite recall the message contents, but we received a few more messages from her over the next almost two weeks. I recall them being reminders or something. It was unnervingly interesting to say the least. We'd initially set up alert reminders for her to take her pain medication. She was on some 4 mg opiate pain meds and 800 mg of paracetamol as a safety net while at home and conscious, but the reminders were disabled. So we contacted the telecoms provider mum used and had to explain, twice, to the poor support person what the issue was, they had to take a few moments to bring their supervisor in on the call because of the strangeness of the call. They looked through her phone history, couldn't find anything regarding any calls or texts from that mobile number. Yet we had the messages which were sent in as evidence. They said it would be looked into and, sure enough, about a week later they called back and said they found the issue. Mum had set up some sort of business reminder clause thing which was sent in her name to her phone that she managed to uncover and stop. I was about 8 or 9 and was deathly afraid of Chucky, Child's Play. I was at a sleepover and this was the movie the majority of girls chose to watch at night. This was pure peer pressure as I couldn't chicken out. I was so scared to sleep that night I stayed up practically on guard, and I swear I saw his red hair run in front of the bed frame. I'm pretty sure my mind was playing tricks on me but I swore this happened for many years. I was traumatized. I'm 34 now and as silly as it seems I remember seeing it. I was abducted by a guy who was planning to rape me when I was 15. He seemed crazy and I felt there was a good chance he might murder me. So I pushed down my total terror, pretended to be friendly persuaded him to slow the car down from 100 to about 60 then jumped out. Fortunately, I didn't break any bones, but I was covered in blood from head to foot from the gravel rash, some were deep gouges that I still bear the scars from today. He stopped and, when he realized I could not be persuaded back into the car, he started trying to run me over. I flagged down a car heading back towards Darwin and that family took me home. The cops got him and he did a few years for it. This guy I met online was so desperate for a girl in his life and when I kept expressing that I wasn't interested he tried to guilt trip me by saying he's gonna kill himself while crying on a phone call. I was scared shitless and ended things with him right then and there. My boyfriend had a big window in old bedroom that had like a milky screen on it almost all the way to the top, that you couldn't see through. But at the top there were maybe 20 centimeters normal window. One day we sat in bed talking late at night, it was really dark outside. I look up, and I see a dude outside staring in, with his face maybe an inch away from the window, he was in our garden, and we found out later that he had brought a pot and put it in front of the window and stood on it so he could peek through the uncovered glass at the top of the window, anyway, I was so shocked that I waved at him and started laughing. You know when you get into a car accident and you have many heart attacks whenever someone does the move that got you hit? Yay. Me too. I worked at an assisted living place years ago. One man on my round was seemingly healthy. He could do everything on his own but get in and out of bed. Retired preacher. 80s. Nice guy. One night after I helped him to bed, I turned away to leave and he said tell the man with you to leave. It was just me and him. So I said what man? And he just repeated tell the man who is staring at me to leave. So I did. I played along. Told the guy to leave. Closed the door. Next shift I came back and was told the old preacher had died. They guessed about two hours after I left his room, there were a few more creepy things that happened there. February 2020. All working junior doctors in the hospital summoned to the lecture hall and informed that we were essentially at DEFCON 1. That they would try their best not to overwork us but that, with limited knowledge, there was a reasonable chance that most of us would catch this inscrutable potentially deadly disease within the next year. We had all seen the chest x-rays from London those remain the most horrific images I've ever seen. In the early days of COVID, people's airways could be about 60% fluid and 40% air, combined with the knowledge that our PPE was essentially being redirected to more competent and or less corrupt governments. I can't count the number of times I was asked to perform a medical procedure on a catatonic COVID patient, in a non-ventilated room, with them breathing on my bare skin throughout. Cluster Headaches there's a reason they're called suicide headaches. High flow O2 at greater than equals 10 liters per minute via home oxygen generator with non-rebreather mask has been a life changer, 
So if you have them ask your doc to prescribe one for you so that insurance pays for it. I can remember two incidents that my mom almost choked me to death. Because I did something wrong or she was mad at me, I can understand the anger because I had food hidden in my room, was very unhygienic especially around my period act. Now I live with my boyfriend, we have a 6 month old daughter and my therapist said that actually 99% of the things I did was because I was depressed, abused and totally not my fault because I have never gotten any help. Horrifying in my case. And it was my younger sister's father threatening the life of my mother, and going so far as to grab a serrated blade knife, steak knife maybe, the ones with a mostly straight blade that curves up to the back at the end, and cutting his own arm, presumably in order to prove he was serious, and then when mom told me to call the cops while scared to the point of wetting herself, and this being somebody who I had never seen so scared, claiming that I didn't need to, as I was shakily dialing 000, Australia, and requesting the cops to come to handle him. Mom spent a month afterwards going to court trying to get an intervention order and when the judge eventually asked her to track down the guy who had literally threatened to kill her and serve him herself, she decided to simply protect me and my sister herself. Next we heard of my sister's father was mom getting a call to say he was dead, my sister was rather sad, I think cause she knew that his core personality wasn't the madman we had last seen, and thanks to the stories mom told her she knew when she was little he was a kind man. There's an abandoned hospital in my area that is said to be haunted. It was a popular place to go ghost hunting but the city made it illegal to go there after it was found that it was being used for drug deals, satanic rituals, and rumors of dead homeless people in the hospital basement. Me and a friend would go there anyway cause one of the doors couldn't be locked. The hospital was just shocking. Gang symbols and satanic symbols spray painted on the walls, blood stains on the wall, a bloody handprint on the wall with the word help written in blood. It was very interesting, the last time me and her went there, two armed criminals were attempting to break in through one of the doors with a crowbar. They saw us and asked what we were doing there. We said we were ghost hunting. They said we shouldn't do that cause the cops were staking the place out and then they took off running. We never went back there because we didn't want to risk getting eventually shot. I was on a cross-country road trip from Ohio to Oregon helping my best friend B. F move with one of our other friends at the time R. M., helping as well in another car. We didn't reserve lodging in advance because we thought we would just drive as much as we felt we could handle and pick a place to stay. One of our requirements was that the place have a pool because we all like swimming and it helps us relax a little on the way this will be important later. We cross over into Utah and after some harrowing weather events none of us knew were possible could be a story in and of itself. We were pretty exhausted. This was before any of us had smartphones, so we saw a road sign for a motel with a pool. Score. We thought. We found the place and I dropped B off at the lobby entrance to get us set up with a room while R and I parked the cars. The first thing I noticed was that there were people poking their heads out their doors and standing in front of the rooms as though they actually lived at this motel and we were new neighbors moving in. Strange, but I ignored it to try to find a space. I got one next to what looks like a garage. I get out and start walking toward the lobby, I get to a point where I can see the garage more fully. There is a massive glass window in what looks like a garage with a concrete floor. On the concrete slab was a couple of beach chairs, towels, some toys that were made to play in the sand with, and a blue hard plastic kiddie pool. Yes, dear readers, this was the advertised pool. The sign had a full-sized pool in it, but whatever I was tired and just needed sleep at this point. Gawking at the pool held me up long enough that B was already walking toward me with the room keys. R was still having trouble finding a spot, so B hands me a key so I could check the room out while she helped him find a space. I open the door without a problem and try to flip on the light. Nothing. I feel my way through the dark room and find a table light. Nothing. I am still feeling around and I heard a strange sound, but couldn't place it. I finally find a light over the second bed and the room is illuminated for the first time. The room was clearly very dated with floral sheets, curtains, wallpaper, and lampshades, all different. What seemed to match though was what looked like dried blood stains on the sheets, lampshades, and wall that very much looked like arterial spray. If this happened in the past, they sure as hell lined the sheets and everything up perfectly again after washing them, through my horror. I remembered that I heard something in the direction of what I could then see was the bathroom. The bathroom door is closed. I go to open the door and some creature the size of an opossum scurried quickly past me, 
and out of the thankfully still open door outside. I don't know exactly what it was, but I was not interested in finding out what it was or what else might be in that bathroom. I noped right the heck out of there, and I was absolutely done with this place. I left the room and told R to stop looking. We were not staying here. I told B what I saw in her face went from confusion, to horror, to anger. It was time for B to put on her Karen wig and get her money back, and I didn't feel at all bad about sicking her on this place. I followed behind as she stormed back into the office. I am listening into the conversation as I look around at this lobby. It was about 3 am and the free breakfast was sitting on a counter. A plastic contraption with two compartments for cereal that twist out a small amount at a time like a candy dispenser. The part that scares me more now that I have had food safety training was the milk that was just sitting out on the table next to the cereal dispensers. Unrefrigerated. At 3 am, how long was that out, B successfully got our money back after having to argue for a while. They did not want to give up on this money and after everything I saw, maybe it was rare that they got new customers. I still wonder what I would have found in that bathroom if I wasn't too scared to look, but I think I got scared well enough with what I did see. I was so scared, my adrenaline gave me the push to drive completely through Utah until we got to the next state. I will still never stay in Utah, or even drive through it if I can help it. Tis cursed. When I was six I lived in a house and there was a train track right behind us. One day my sister and I were playing in the backyard and we heard a train about to go past so we scrambled onto the trampoline to want H it go by. The backyard was built in a way that if you were a kid you'd be too short to see the train tracks without being on the trampoline but if you were an adult you could stand on the patio and watch the trains go past and it was a very clear view. My sister and I somehow didn't see the old man get ran over by the train but my mum did and immediately ran out and demanded that we get inside. Since my dad's a veteran and veterans have high suicide rates my mum texted him just to make sure it wasn't him and when we found out it wasn't and he was still at the army base she calmed down a lot. About an hour later a forensics team came to pick up all the little itty bitty chunks of dead guy that had been left on the tracks and our neighbors asked if they could come over with beers and watch we h was so inhumane and cruel. I just feel so bad because that man would have been in earshot listening to my sister and I pretend the chickens were dinosaurs while he contemplated throwing himself in front of a freight train. I didn't find out what had happened until a few months ago. I was walking through a botanical garden last June and midway through my journey, I began hearing a mother cry out the name of her son. Her son had gone missing and nobody could find him. Hearing her cries, the raw desperation paired with despair in her voice I'll never forget the sound of it. It felt as if a veil of dread had been placed over the entire park, I was 16 at the time so it was also scary in the sense that I was a younger female. Girlfriend lost her sister and father in the same month. Became severally depressed and was suicidal. Girlfriend and father were ex-police officers and avid hunters and kept guns in the house. One night while crashing at her house, I woke up to her loaded drunk, sitting on her deck with a gun. Convinced her to give me the gun. It was loaded. I asked her what she was doing with the gun. She admitted that when she finished her drink, she had planned on offing me and then herself. When I asked her why she would kill me, she told me so I could be with her in the afterlife, I noped out. When I was around 9 I used to see shadows that looked like people when I woke up in the night, most of the time the shadow looked like a man and he just stood there looking at me, no movement or anything. Another time I saw a shadow that looked like my mum sitting on the edge of my bed. I thought it was her so I just said what are you doing? No reply, these shadows never really did anything, just stayed still. I just went back to sleep and didn't think much of it for some reason? No idea why I didn't feel scared, I'm looking around my room right now in case something jumps at me lmao. I thought it could be sleep paralysis but I could move around and speak so it probably wasn't. Maybe schizophrenia, I've never seen them since then, kinda scared they'll come back. When I was younger, about 3, I was in my room sleeping and my mom was in the bathroom. Now me dad who we thought had gone out for the day actually came back early to me sleeping and my mom in dub C. He decided to scare my mom by wearing a mask. What was special about this mask was that it was an old man mask made of rubber, quite difficult to find in India at the time, online stores weren't a thing, so, he stood by the moonlight and scared my mom with a mask. She got scared so bad her legs rebooted and she near faints. Now for the twist, when my dad had come checking for me, I had woken up due to his rustling around and went around 5 minutes later looking for him. 
I come out the room to my mom dropping in front of me and my dad rushing to check on her, he had the mask and a keen fea hand, scared the crap out of me so bad I piss myself, to put the cherry on the cake. Our neighbor's daughter had committed suicide a couple hours before so mom was traumatized about that too. Sorry for bad English, it is my fifth language and I am on phone. Driving around country lanes, southeast England, late at night with two other friends, bored, young and had no responsibility, this was a weeknight, a man appeared from the woods in front who had a ghostly white face, what seemed like black holes for eyes. No expression on his face and had what I can only describe as 17th century clothing on, like a white rough thing on his neck and the rest was all black. He was just looking through us, we all went from laughing and chatting to deathly quiet, and none of us looked around once we passed him. I remember thinking, don't look around behind me the others said they had the same thought, none of us had taken drugs or been drinking, and we still talk about it to this day. I'm sure there must have been an explanation like a fancy dress do or something. But this was midweek and in the middle of literally nowhere. Went on a family holiday to Barcelona in 2017 during the summer. Walking towards La Rambla and see everyone running away screaming and looking panicked. Saw injured people limping away, some literally dragging themselves across the street. We took shelter in a cafe and watched the news of the terrorist attack that happened with a van that plowed through the big crowd with the attacker still on the loose. There was a man punching the wall and in floods of tears watching the news shouting no. No, no. The news said shopkeepers are being advised not to shelter people around La Rambla and we all got kicked out into the empty streets. Had to walk across the city to get to a open train station and everyone around us was clearly shaken up. Pretty grim experience in such a beautiful city. I'm living through it Aaron. I might be homeless in a few months because I don't have credit, don't have a cosigner and my savings are dwindling because of the rising prices. You gotta make 3x the amount to rent anywhere, and I'm not. Also the food stamp program won't let me get on food stamps because I make too much money even though it's minimum wage. Not sure if this is what you're going for, but I had one when I was a boy scout on a trip to the Grand Canyon. We were staying at some campgrounds on the Havasupai reservation there and had to hike through a dry riverbed slash canyon for part of it. On the way out. Me and a buddy were about maybe 15 minutes away from members in front or behind us, and we started to hear something from behind us. For those who don't know, when you're in a canyon or dry river or whatever, and you hear a steady thunderous sound, that means flash flood. We look at each other, exchange a look slash telepathic oh fuck, and drop our packs and run up as high as we can get. As it gets closer, we see it's not a flash flood, but some rancher running a pack of horses at full gallop through this canyon. There was another time one night at a scout ranch in New Mexico. We were all out fixing our bear bags, all our fragrant SHD in a bag on a rope out of reach about 50 yards from the tents, and on the way back to the campsite maybe 100 yards away he sees two little blue dots moving side to side a bit. Once again for those who don't know, those are the reflections of mountain lion eyes. We yelled and screamed but eventually the ranger and two guys had to get within throwing range of some rocks to scare it off. I miss hiking and camping. I was camping with my fiancé at a remote beach in Australia and in the middle of the night a truck full of drunk guys pulled up. They surrounded our tent and started saying stuff like who gotcha girlfriend in there with ya, mate? Ha 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 what you doing with her, huh? Got room for more, ha ha ha. It was a very small tent and some of them were laying on the ground outside, we could hear them breathing just inches from our face with only a thin piece of nylon between us. One started tugging on the tent zipper but thankfully one of his mates told him to stop, we were absolutely terrified but didn't say a word, eventually after what seemed like an eternity they lost interest and wandered down to the water. My fiancé quickly and quietly removed the fiberglass tent poles to use as a weapon if needed and we picked up the tent and all its contents, hurled it all into the back of his truck in one go and took off, that was probably about 35 years ago now but I've thought about it on every camping trip since. Went to the bathroom one night and heard scrabbling from behind the wall of my shower. It sounded too big to be a mouse, more like an oversized rat or something. I thought I was hearing things, but when I went back to my room, I could still hear it. I peeked out the window and there was nothing outside that was clinging to side paneling or anything. Wasn't the upstairs neighbors doing anything, either. To this day I have no idea what it was. But was it terrifying as someone who lived alone? 
I was told by my doctor that I was about to have a lung embolism and needed to drop everything and go to the heart and lung emergency department. Turns out, after getting hooked up to all kinds of machines and waiting around for a long time pondering my mortality, it was a false test result, I just had a small chest infection. When I was 15 my BF and I had gone out to smoke weed. My dad was against weed but we would sneak out to some place in the forest, smoke, and play basketball at a court nearby. It was probably close to 1 am when we were walking back home. When we got to the entrance of my neighborhood I saw a guy staring at us in the Home Depot parking lot. He was far away so I didn't thinking anything of it, I thought maybe he was a security guard even though that doesn't make any sense lol. Anyways I saw something shiny in his hand and we thought it could be knife but we just figured it's probably his phone. We waved and he did nothing. We were high so we were thinking more so about getting caught. Anyways right when we get inside my neighborhood I hear footsteps slamming the ground. I didn't look back and just grabbed my friend's arm and yelled to run. We just kept running and the guy said nothing to us. I'm pretty sure if we stopped to turn around when I first heard he would have gotten to us. Right when we got inside my house I looked out the window and he was staring at me 5 to 10 feet away from the door. A day or two later the same guy shot, killed, and played with the bodies of two teenagers across the street from my house. I still regret not calling the police but I was scared to get in trouble, hi so I wasn't thinking clearly, and I think some part of me wanted to think he just wanted to rob us, edit, it's even worse because I went to school with the girl that he killed. She was a couple years older than me and when I was in kindergarten she was my reading buddy, our school paired one older kid to a younger kid and they'd read to us every Friday. When we were younger me and my two younger brothers were home alone because my parents went out to America to visit my older brother who was in a university out there. It was only for 5 days and I was turning 18 in just over a month and my other brothers were 13 and 15 so it wasn't like we were kids. As I was the oldest I was in charge and was responsible for looking after them both. My 13 year old brother, we'll use his nickname Stocks, has quite severe anxiety due to some things that happened in the past so he would come into my parents room at least twice a night because of nightmares, that or they would go into him because he woke up and was screaming. The first couple of days Stocks came into my room about 3 quarters times per night because of nightmares, I think with my parents being gone his nightmare were worse. Normally what I would do is I would snuggle with him for about 15 minutes until he had calmed down and then walk him back to his room and we would both go back to sleep. On the third night I was up quite late doing some assignments that I needed to get done and I heard some creaking coming from Stocks's room. I assumed he had another nightmare and was coming to get me but I waited 5 minutes and nothing happened so I brushed it off as the pipes creaking again. Probably 15 minutes later Stocks came running into my room and said that he had a nightmare but when he woke up he felt like things were touching his leg. I've gotten nightmares before where I wake up and think I can feel things on me but it is nothing and just me imagining it so I presumed that was what was going on right now. I snuggled him for a little bit and then we started to walk back to his room. 6 or 7 steps from his door I just had this gut feeling something was wrong and that we shouldn't go in there. Stocks loves stories so I said that he can go back to my room and pick out a book and read it for a little bit which he was more than happy to do. We got back to my room and he picked out a book, sat on my bean bag and started reading. I logged onto my computer and checked the camera that we have in Stocks' room. No we don't watch him all the time but because he has epilepsy and seizures sometimes, we have a camera in his room so if we hear a thud we can check he is okay. I logged onto the camera and I saw a tall man. Probably about 6 foot all dressed in black, holding a knife. He was behind the door ready to jump us as soon as we walked in. I immediately called the police and they arrived about 15-20 minutes later and arrested the guy. He tried to jump them but because I showed them the camera first they knew where he was. Turns out the dude had an arrest warrant out for armed robbery, breaking and entering and suspicion of murder. And the brushing on Stocks' leg was him walking past his bed to hide in the closet until someone came in. Always trust your gut people. It can save you life. Happened around Christmas. I was eating cookies and almost choked to death. Really scary seeing your life flash before your eyes and then puking out chocolate cookies. Oh boy do I have a story. Blood warning. You've been warned. When I was around 6, I had to get my tonsils out because I kept getting sick. Standard kid stuff. The thing is, I have on Wilbrand's disease. Con Wilbrands means you struggle to clot internally. At the time, nobody knew or gave me the proper medicine in order to counteract this. 
The wound made by the tonsils being taken out stayed open and continued to leak into my stomach. At first everything was fine. A few days later, I'm projectile vomiting blood. My mom's, now, ex had shut down her phone lines before leaving us to fend for ourselves. I remember being in the back of our old car with my grandma gripping my shoulder as my mom said things I can't remember. I held a pick bucket, and it was filled to the top with blood. My blood. Something about that has stained my mind. Nothing can ever compare to seeing and holding that much deep red and brown. It took a week and two more blood vomiting episodes in order to actually get diagnosed and treated. I had to have about two bags worth of blood given to me so my body could fight. On a plus side, I now have a magic spray that makes nosebleeds go away. Oh, and the tile I got to draw for the hospital ceiling. I want to add my mom and her friend's story. She used to work in a hospital, and I believe the term back then was a candy striper. It's a type of hospital volunteer job. She worked the late shift and sometime her job involves wheeling bodies down to the morgue but not needing to put them at the body cabinet. She told me how she and later her friend ended up quitting. One night in particular, she had to wheel a body alone. But halfway through the walk the lights started to flicker and then died. Mom had a bit of a panic attack and just ran off leaving the body in the hallway. Similar thing happened to her friend. Flickering lights and a sound from the body. We find out later it's air coming out and a natural if not morbid phenomenon. Friend ran off, and told her supervisor she was done. I was about 15 or so, taking a walk around my neighborhood. It was in the middle of a forest, so even in the hot summer months there was usually enough shade for a stir-crazy teen to walk the sidewalks with. As I'm walking that day, a truck pulls up next to me, and the guy inside asks for directions. He names the next street over. So I point and tell him to keep going, he asks if I could get in the car to show him the way. Luckily I was at a point in the sidewalk that backed up to my street, so I just told him no, again pointed him on his way, and cut through my backyard to get home and inside as fast as possible. It didn't seem like he tried to go into my street to find me, but just in case I locked what doors I could and called my father for extra safety. Looking back, it's a lot scarier to think about than it was to experience it. I'm not sure if this is my creepiest memory, I'm talking about what came to mind right away. Then we still lived in our old house, it was a small house built in 1905. One day my family and I went to visit relatives, and my grandmother stayed at home. When we returned home, my grandmother asked with obvious surprise when we returned and why we had not gone home earlier. The fact is that when someone opens the gate, it is immediately audible, the sound is very clear and it's hard to confuse it with anything. Grandmother heard the gate open, and then my father called her outside. Grandmother looked in the windows but did not see anyone. She did not go out and sat at home while the voice insistently called her outside. An hour later we arrived, I believe my grandmother because it would be difficult to confuse the voice of her own son with someone else's. I have another reason to believe her, I sometimes heard strange voices with incoherent speech, and I also heard a knock on the window, next to which there are no trees and nothing at all to hit against it. I was sleeping alone in my room and the only people in the house other than me were my parents in another room down below which was very far from mine. I had watched some scary movie and turned off the TV to sleep after closing my door. Then after a few minutes I hear some kind of small noise in the corner of my room. Then again from another corner. Then suddenly the TV gets turned on on its own, I get a little confused and a bit scared, turn off the TV with the remote on my side drawer and try to sleep again. Then I hear that little noise in the corner again and after some time the TV again turns on on its own. Now I'm scared shitless, turn off the TV again and now from the main switch also, open my room door completely with outside light illuminating it a bit and finally sleep. Next morning I wake up to find out that some mice had snuck into the house and then into my room who were making that noise and for TV we have Nvidia shields and my parents were trying to cast some movie that night which triggered my TV to turn on. Now this is kind of funny but considering the fact I had witnessed all that after watching a scary movie made it pretty scary. I was drugged at a bar. It was a family friendly restaurant by day, and a popular bar at night. I felt safe there. I was with a couple of friends and I ordered one bottle of beer. This guy was sitting next to me, and chatted with us. He was perfectly friendly, he said he was an ER doctor and was about to go to work which I thought was a little weird because I don't think he should have been drinking in that case. He said he had to go to work, and looked at me and said, I'll see you later. 
The way he said it and the look on his face gave me chills and I'd never experienced something like that before. I finished the beer and we went downstairs where there was live music. I remember nothing after that. Next thing I knew I was lying on the sidewalk and my friend was on the phone with my boyfriend, crying. Then I remember throwing up. Then I woke up the next day at my apartment with no recollection of anything else. I don't know if it was that guy who drugged me or the bartender. I kept my beer close to me at all times. I'm a girl, but one of my guy friends had the same experience at that same bar. He had one drink and woke up lying down in a parking lot with no memory of how he got there. It's terrifying that this can happen even when you guard your drink close. I woke up randomly in the middle of the night, and had a really bad panic attack because I heard banging and stuff at my bedroom window. I was completely convinced that somebody was trying to break into my apartment, and I already have paranoia as it is so it was really really bad. I woke up my boyfriend and voila, it was just our maintenance people doing renovations on the outer walls of the apartment complex. Some dude knocked on my door, but I didn't see anyone out the peephole. I wait a second and stare outside and turn on the outside light. Nobody, I open the door and can hear someone shifting their weight on the stairs around the corner, so instead of sticking my head out I ask what they need, dude kept trying to get me to step outside. Finally made up a story about me picking on his sister on Facebook and him hacking satellites to track me down. By the time I think about closing the door I've got enough of a read on him to know that he's looking for me to make the first move and would probably take closing the door as a challenge. No idea if I'm right or not but I figure I'll let him talk himself tired and bludgeon him with the door if he moves to come inside. Dude kept making things up to be mad about until his cigarette burnt down to his finger. Then he walked off without another word. But while he was going down the wooden steps I could hear someone else walking away on the pavement. I'm glad I didn't take the bait and fight him, and after the police treated me like an insane person I got a security camera and a short sword. I was about 10 or 11 when this happened. My parents basement was slash is unfinished and we had a small TV and a single couch in the middle of it for my siblings and I to go play games, watch VHS tapes, whatever. One night I decided to hang out down there by myself and watch some movies and I ended up falling asleep on the couch. While asleep I was in a dream where I was in the exact spot I was in in the basement, watching TV on the couch when something asked me what channel are you watching? Still in the dream I turn and say channel 13 to a short alien type creature sitting next to and staring right at me. After a moment it turned around to the TV itself and I woke up almost instantly in the empty and dark basement. I'm sure my parents came down to turn off the lights and TV at some point, and I am frozen in place for a moment until I hear something behind the couch. I sat up to turn around hoping it was just our dog at the time. It wasn't. There it was, the alien from the dream rising up about two feet from behind the couch and moving toward me. I let out a blood curdling scream and bolted upstairs right to my parents room. Everyone including the dog were upstairs. The most likely explanation is obviously my head was playing tricks on me, but to this day it still feels like something was actually there with me. It doesn't help that my mom and sister say they've heard things constantly in the home for years like people waking around all hours of the night when everyone's in bed. Took a PE class during the summer that was a 3 day hiking trip. The final exam was a 1.5 hours kayak ride through strong current, river. I don't know how to swim. And I told the instructor to go easy on me. We hit a rock, capsized, and the current took me away. I was so scared, but somehow my leg got stuck in between a couple rocks. I guess it wasn't my time to go, cause I was drowning. This happened when I was about 12, and my sister was 18. She was taking a shower and I had to pee, so I walked in the bathroom and sat down, Looked to the right towards the window and there was a creepy shithead standing there watching my sister shower and me pee. We screamed and my mom ran out with a golf club and ran him off. Ended up being our neighbor Michael from across the street, who two years later went to prison for rape and attempted murder of a girl down the street that he broke into her home and attacked her. I've never felt the same about windows in bathrooms. I woke up during surgery. I was having multiple teeth out. Woke up feeling everything while the last one was being pulled and obviously freaked out. The tech and surgeon pinned me to the table and finished pulling the tooth. Then put me back under and did the clean up and stitches. I woke up again and had a panic attack in the recovery room, where I was alone with the tech who asked me mockingly if I even knew why I was crying and told me I couldn't leave unless I calmed down. That obviously didn't calm me down and wasn't something she could actually do so eventually she got my mother from the waiting room. 
I immediately told my mom everything as best I could post op and the tech immediately claimed none of it happened. Luckily my mom did believe me, but no one else does. That surgeon still has a glowing reputation and I have PTSD. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.